Hey, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for your patience. Our technical issues have been resolved. Uh, please stand with me with, uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Welcome again to everyone to our June 13th meeting, uh, Waynesboro Area School District meeting board of directors. And first, uh, let's go ahead and start with the roll call. Testing. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Royer? Here. Mrs. Fortney? Mrs. Strait? Uh, Mrs. Sullivan is not here. Mrs. Miles? Here. Mrs. Zimmerman? Here. Mr. Marvin? Here. Mrs. Harold? Here. Mr. Smith? And here. Okay. Let's move to approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Tonight's meeting? Move to approve the agenda. Second. Questions, additions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Now we will move to our superintendent's report. Dr. Sternheim. Thank you, Mr. Smith. So um, I just want to um, recognize the high school admin, the tech team, uh, the custodians, and obviously all our fabulous students and families. I think we had an absolutely wonderful um, graduation uh, ceremony. I think a number of us were very nervous uh, that it was going to be too hot, but it ended up being a beautiful evening. We want to congratulate all uh, of the class of 2023. Um, summer school and summer camps are up and running. And so as we um, continue to um, do the very best for our learners, uh, we are offering uh, summer learning opportunities as well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, in our haste to move forward, we forgot to do the approval of the minutes from oh. our last meeting. So can I get a motion to approve minutes from last meeting? Move, move to, to approve, approve the minutes. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, do we have any public comment? Okay. And now we move down to board reports. As a quick note with the passing of the budget on the previous meeting, budget will be on a bit of a hiatus uh, until the fall. Um, we'll work out the schedule and that'll be published uh, with Mrs. Kuzer on the, on the public website. Um, I do believe we have a facilities committee meeting next week, next Tuesday. Uh, that will be at uh, the Clayton Avenue building uh, in the boardroom there um, at 530. Thanks, sir. Any other um, policy committee meeting for Thursday uh, this week has been canceled and we will get dates out for the meetings shortly. Okay. Academic met uh, totally. I believe it was for high school issues, as I recall. Uh, next meeting is if we stay with it. Um, Dr. Royer is going to soon be our new chairman for academic. Um, but I will say tentatively we're going to meet Wednesday, July 20, not July, June 28th. 1030. Okay. And just uh, just to announce to everyone that um, all four of those committees uh, meetings are open to the public. So you are uh, welcome to, to join us for those any of those committee meetings. And now we move down to our winter spring um, student recognitions. Who's going to start? Mrs. Sawicki. Mrs. Sawicki. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to first thought to thank Dr. Sternerhein, Dr. DeShong, and all of the members of the board for allowing me the time and opportunity this evening uh, to present to you some of the students that performed above and beyond academically over the course of the 2022-2023 school year. Um, we're here tonight to recognize those students and their hard work and dedication. 
that resulted in recognition beyond the walls of our own Waynesboro Area School District. Just like our gifted athletes that are gonna be recognized here tonight, our gifted scholars need to be given the opportunity to learn, practice, and then go out and compete against other student teams in their areas of expertise. And we've been doing that since roughly December of last year through our last competitions here in May at the very end of the year. So very quickly, I'm just gonna run through the list of the activities you're gonna see up on the screen. So first we have scholastic writing and art, which covers 27 different categories ranging from critical essay to journalism, to photography, to any kind of art activity that the students would like to participate in and explore. We have National History Day. Um, this year was Frontiers in History and students can compete in five different areas and explore an area of history in depth. We have the Science Olympiad, which if you're previous on the school board, you know is 23 different events for both the high school and the middle school. So that's 46 different events that students can compete in. PA Media and Design is our tech competition. And that has six different areas, anywhere from programming to this year, we had students that uh, placed first in web page design, documentary, um, animation, and uh, 3D design. We did the stock market game again and had some fabulous results with that, which I'll share with you. For our students that are excellent in math, we have the Math Olympiad at the middle school and PA Math League at the high school. We do the Thinking Cap Quiz Bowl. Of course, we participate in Brain Busters, which I think most of you are familiar with since it is on TV. And this past year, we did for the second time at the high school have a PA Governor's STEM team. Uh, that competed both regionally and at the state level. So I think the list up on the board's a little different than the one that I have in front of me. Um, I'm not sure how many students are actually here. So if I call your name and you wanna stand up or do you wanna have them come down? Okay, have you can come down. Do we have certificates? Okay. So we're gonna start uh, our first competition that we finished in. We did 10 weeks in the stock market game. Our students were able to do um, invest $100,000 for a period of 10 weeks. And we had students finish in the top 10 of the entire state. So we'll just do those quickly in order. We had Jaden Rooney, who had a 19.3% return in only 10 weeks, so $19,300. Uh, we had Madison Warren, who was close second at 17,200. Addison Calloway with 15,800. Jaden Leach with 13,500. And Joey Jacobs, who was at 13,400. Next, we have the Scholastic Art and Writing Group. This was both middle school and high school this year. Um, and I'm gonna not only name who they are, but the activity that they participated in. So Zoe Bowersox won three different awards. She won a silver key in poetry, an honorable mention in flash fiction, and an honorable mention in photography. I don't believe she's here. We had Isaac Pappas, who is a seventh grader, wrote an entire novel and was an honorable mention. Chloe Chacru won three awards. She had a gold key, which automatically went on to the national competition in a short story, an honorable mention in critical essay, and an honorable mention in film and animation. Moving on to the high school for the same category, art and writing, we had Aiden Hess, who won an honorable mention for his design. And I am going to put a plug in for you. He redesigned the Waynesboro School District logo, if we ever want to look at that. It's really good. First choice in education. We had Joey Jacobs, who won a gold key for his critical essay. We had Zaley Mussolino for her honorable mention, her personal essay. Gabby Strasser, who won an honorable mention for her science fiction writing. And then Madison Warren won two awards. She won a silver key for her critical essay and a honorable mention for her poetry, which was an honor to our uh, retiring teacher, Gary Brett. That was something that he got to take with him, which was nice. 
And now move on to National History Day. We had two students, one at the middle school and one at the high school that did extremely well this year. Will Yost, I know, is not here. Not only did he place third in Region 8, which includes many, many school districts around the area, um, he also won third place in the state of Pennsylvania when he went to the state competition, and he was an alternate being a third place finisher in the state for the national competition, which just was completed. And then our high school student was Megan Miller. Megan was a senior and she won second place for her documentary film. That, it, that was in the region. She competed at the state level and though she didn't place in state, she was awarded the best in Naval History Prize. And um, that was highlighted on the webpage and in the newspaper, the local News One newspaper. That takes us to the Science Olympiad. Um, first, our high school students, Peter Childers won fourth place for Code Busters. I believe he's here. Nevea Diebrick, she won fifth place for Bioprocess Lab. We have TJ Cox, who won two medals, one for Green Generation and one for Code Busters. Mary Schlotterbeck, who won fourth place in Code Busters. And Kyle Swanson, who finished out that Code Busters team. They all four won fourth place. All three won fourth. Then we move on to the middle school. We had Isabella Bupp. She won two medals, third place for Green Generation and fifth place for Bioprocess Lab. Tyler Rooney, who won fourth place for Code Busters and fifth place for Crime Busters. We had Brenna Hollingsworth, who won third place for Disease Detectives. We had Macy Bittner, who won two medals. She brought home one of our first place medals in Write It, Do It, and was third place in Disease Detectives. Caden Shakru also won two medals, fourth place in Code Busters, fifth place in Crime Busters. Landon Kipe won fourth place in Flight. And lastly, Ava Motes won two awards, two medals. That was also a first place medal in Write It, Do It, and fourth place in Flight. That takes us to our PA Governor STEM Challenge. I don't wanna miss anything here. And I don't know if I'm following the slide, so I apologize. Maybe in a little bit different order. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again and I'll say it every time I'm up here if I do it any longer. I just started, next year will be my 13th year as the gifted teacher. And of course I was embarrassed at the end of the day activities. I've been working here for 30 years, so. Might only be here a couple more, but um, the hardest thing that I do with my group of students is the governor's challenge. It is rigorous, it is long, it is highly competitive. You can only have certain students that can, you know, have the wherewithal and the abilities to do the different things that compete with a team there. And we did have a team this year. Um, we took third place in the state with a stock market program. Um, I could tell you a little bit about it, but if you would like the website, it has a whole website that goes with it and it works. It's linked to a server. You could click it. You can get some investment advice right away. Uh, but those three students, so they won third runner up. They won the best in mathematics award in the state. They were also recognized by the other students that were there, their peers for being best in math mathematics. And they all won a $300 scholarship for college. And that team was Joey Jacobs, Megan Miller, and Madison Warren. Call it a monument, by the way, if you want to Google it. Then we had our PA Media and Design competition. These were all high school students this year, but they each um, did very, very well. We had Anissa Minnick, who placed first in animation. She also went to the state competition and ended up placing third in the state of Pennsylvania. Jordan Banky, she placed first in 3D design. And Cassidy Wheeler, who placed first place in web page design. We had Jaden Leach, who placed second in graphic logo and design. And Aiden Hess continued competing in graphic logo and design in one second place there as well. So at the end of the year, we always 
finish up with our math competitions. At the middle school, we do the math Olympiad. And those students aren't recognized as a team, they're recognized individually. And I'd like to recognize three really high placing students at the Math Olympiad this year. So we had Chloe Shakru who came in first place in our team, but she also won a silver pin, which meant she was in the top 10% of all students that did the Math Olympiad last year. And that was over 100,000 students that did Math Olympiad. Tyler Rooney came in second place. He also was in the top 10% and won a silver pin. And Roland Marr, he also came in second place with the same score and won a silver pin as well. I'm really psyched about our PA Math League team from this year at the high school. Um, we've had the highest scores that we've had since I took over the gifted program. Um, and we pay, placed second in the region and the top five scores for our team end up being our overall team score. And you do win as a team at that level. And some of these were ties. So I'm recognizing more than just five students. But um, first was Sam Black and Kyle Swanson. They both had 27 points out of 36 points. And I would challenge anybody here to do a PA Math League contest and not just have your minds blown. It's very, very difficult. Second place was Gabrielle Strasser. Third place was Devin Weinkoop. We had a tie for fourth place, which was Joey Jacobs and Jaden Rooney. And then our tie for fifth place was Riley Crom and Jaden Leach. Last but not least, we had two contests that we don't typically do, but I'm very open with the kids if they find something that they would like to do. And I think it's highly beneficial to what it is that they're trying to excel at and learn. We'll go ahead and do those things. So we had a student at the middle school compete in the American Legion essay contest this year. Uh, the, the topic was, can social media affect someone's life? We all know that it can. But Zoe Bowersox won first place for that essay writing contest. And then last but not least, there's a wonderful professor up at Chippensburg University who has started a publication for students in the area called First Light. And we had a student at the high school, Addison Calloway, for her poem called The Color Pink. She won the Spectrum Award for High Artistic Achievement. And I think that's it. So thank you very much. Are, are willing and would we have them come over here to the area and just have a photo taken real quick? We can go ahead and continue with the presentation, but we can get a photo right here. Thank you. He's not going to open anything. All right. Well, hey, first of all, I would really want to thank the, the school board for their tremendous support of athletics. Um, we have a, a, a lot of student athletes here, and without your support, um, we, they wouldn't have the experience that they do have. And I truly believe that athletics, they learn life lessons out on those fields, out on the courts that they carry with them long after graduation. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you do for our athletes. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, before I get started, whoop, before we get started, I just wanna go over, I do a thing called Quad A and uh, Dr. McCallum and, and Dr. Sterner Hine allow me to take one period at the end of the school year and we recognize our athletes and it kind of follows up with what Ms. Sawicki was just going through. It's Quad A stands for Athletic Academic Achievement Awards. And we always talk about the wins and the losses, and we talk about um, you know things that they do out on the fields and during competition. Bless you. And um, I like to recognize from the athletic standpoint or the academic standpoint with what they achieve, and it's pretty amazing. And and a couple of years ago, one of our teachers did her master's degree, um, working towards her doctorate degree, and worked on a study that said that student athletes have a higher GPA, they have better attendance, and they have less. Uh, problems on the disciplinary side and that's across the board and that's reflected not only 
in our school, but other schools uh, throughout the country, as well as that carries into college with a higher graduation rate. So I just want to run a couple numbers um, through you just so you kind of understand what impact and support that you have for our teams. Um, in the fall, we had 255 student athletes. In the winter, we had 155 student athletes. And in the spring, we had 194 student athletes. So there's 604 total athletic enrollment, which encompassed 425 different athletes, which is right at 30% of our enrollment here in Waynesboro are involved with athletics. We have 22 varsity teams here at the, at the high school. 21 out of 22 of those teams had a team average during season that was above a 3.0. And 15 out of those 22 teams had a team average at 3.5 or better. So again, they're getting it done, not only on the field, not only on the field, but in the, in the classroom. And our coaches do a great job of holding our kids accountable with, so that they remain eligible. With that, we had 471 student athletes with an individual GPA of 3.0 or higher during season. And we had 336 student athletes had a GPA of 3.5 or higher during season. And we just recognize a lot of them that are involved in the REACH program with Mrs. Sawicki, and it was really good to see. And on top of that, they encompassed a record of 163 wins, 116 losses, and two ties for our varsity team. So... Again, I'm very proud of what they do in the classroom and then also what they do on the field. So uh, just some quick numbers here. Again, I, I gave you that. That's our fall student athletes. And I went through and I had a 75 slide program that we ran through in about <laughs> 50 minutes. So I'm not going to do that here, but I just want to give you just kind of what we go through with the kids and we recognize our kids and we also recognize the highest GPA from each team and we give them a certificate. So I'll just kind of give you a little brief thing. So in the fall, that's the numbers with the kids with the GPAs. And then we had 37 at 4.0 or higher. Okay, we can go to the next slide, please. And then here's the winner. Again, 21 with the kids with a GPA of 4.0 or higher. And then in the fall, or sorry, in the spring, we had 194 athletes, 24 of those were 4.0 or higher. And so then we go down and we recognize each team. And so our highest overall GPA for the season for one team was, was our cross country team. And so coach Jen Atkins and then her team had the highest cumulative. So we recognized that team. And that then what we did is we went through each team and went through what their grade point averages were as a team. And then we go through, go ahead, next slide. And Joey Jacobs was our highest GPA for that, for that season. And then the next slide, and then Madeline Scheffler was the, the highest female for her that season. And then we go through and we list all the kids that had a three, five or higher GPA and they'll get, they get recognized as well. And so we did that with each team. So we break that down to 22 times three slides. You kind of get the, get the math there. And so I just had that one just to give you an example and then go to the next slide. And then we also recognize the students with their highest GPA over the course of their career. And both of these, Riley and Madison, graduated with a 104 GPA. So, and again, you you got the privilege of hearing Madison speak at graduation. And again, both uh, tremendous, both on the court, in the fields, and then obviously in the classroom. So we recognize them. And then we go through and recognize our three sport athletes, because we talk about the importance of being a, a multi-sport athlete. And just to give you an idea, again, really appreciated that you allow us and we actually have added several sports with bocce and swimming over the past year that last year we had the most number of three sport athletes here at, at the high school. We had 24 this year. Let me make sure I get the number right. This year, this year, this year, it was 45 students that were three sport athletes here at the high school. So again, we, we bumped that number up by 20 in just one year by adding um, those those two sports in the past two years. So again, thank you very much for that. So we go and we recognize our three sport athletes. We get them a t-shirt. So it says Waynesboro Athletics has the year and has three stars on it. So that's what we do with our, but here's our, our list of our three sport athletes. We can go through, there's three pages of this. So you want to <laughs> click through this. Continued. And then the last thing that we do is, is, um, we, well, sorry, and the second last thing we do is we recognize, again, our athletes who are moving on and to compete in college. And again, this is something that 
Um, I, my background is, is, is in college athletics. And so we talk a lot about that. Um, and we've had, we have 19 athletes that are moving on last year. We had 25 athletes that, that moved on. Uh, my first year that I was here, we had zero athletes that, that went on to compete in college. And so that number has been pretty consistent here the last four years, anywhere between 20 and 23 athletes, 25 athletes. So again, very proud of our athletes that are moving on to compete in college. And so we have that banner out there. We get them to sign the banner. So it's pretty cool. All right. And then the last thing we do is we recognize our student athlete, our athlete of the year. In order to qualify, you must be a three-sport athlete. And then we go on to the ones that have excelled the most um, in the course of this past season. So Sladen Fisher for our girls and Jaylon Bean was for our boys. And so and again, I I, I can't thank you enough for the opportunities that you have uh, given our kids uh, these past year. So uh, with that, we're going to have our coaches come up and they're going to introduce our athletes. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do our winter athletes uh, because, well, we were competing in states for swimming and we're competing. So we were still going on when we were supposed to go. So we didn't know what the recognition was going to be. So we're going to go through and um, who's the first team that's up? Boys basketball. So Coach Hoffman, if you'd come down, that would be great. Thank you, uh, Mr. McQuam, and thank you to the school board for having all of us tonight. We appreciate, uh, obviously, the opportunity to get in front of you and be recognized. Um, the um, Some of my guys back there have heard me at a banquet, so when they said, oh, boy, Coach Hoffman behind the mic, so I'll try to keep this brief. But when you're talking about a uh, bunch of young men that you literally love, um, it, it becomes a little more difficult to – to say goodbye. So this is kind of the probably one of, if not the last things we get to do together as a group. And so I need to begin though, by thanking um, our coaching staff, coach Richie Davis, coach Rick Dusler, and uh, coach Tyler Stoner um, and coach Kyle Hoffman could not be here tonight, but I'd like um, as well as coach Adam Hebner and, and Connor McFarland at the middle school level. They, um, all those guys play a big, excuse me, a big, big part in, um, in the success of our program and the success of this year's team. So I'd like to give the, our coaching staff a big hand right now, too. A uh, couple items that I'd just like to hit on. Number one, this, this group of young men have experienced some success. Our program has experienced some success over the past few years including the year before when this current senior class was was uh were juniors and um so they had a, a lot of expectations placed upon them uh both internally as well as from the outside the 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 um other teams the other coaches in the league knew we were going to be good um i think there was some buzz within the the district that thought we were going to be good and within our team they absolutely wanted to be good and so when you go into a season and, and they basically had a goal of, of being the best team in school history, and when that's your, your benchmark, um, that's not an easy thing to attack day in and day out. And, and to have it come basically to fruition uh, was, was a really, really cool thing to, to be a part of, led by uh, the young men behind me and, and particularly our senior class. So that was the one thing. The other thing is they're, they're very, very unselfish. Um, I've had numerous people in the community as well as other coaches just say how connected of a group of young men they were, both on the floor. And, and I had the privilege of, of observing and witnessing that outside of, of basketball and practice. And, and um, they really were a, a connected, unselfish group. In fact, I, I can't remember if it was this year or last year, but the unselfishness showed through. I, th I think it might have been Ryan Schaefer received some honor at one of the tournaments we were in. Like he made the all tournament team. They had to mail me the trophy because Ryan left it in the locker room. He really, truly didn't even care. Um, <laughs> he, I just said, hey, Ryan, did you forget something the other night? And oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I did. And uh, it, that was that's just one example. That was 
very, very common within our team. Um, the other cool part was the, the um, you know, I had other coaches comment to me that it was, it was while, while it was hard to get um, their tails kicked a few times by Waynesboro, what made it even more um, almost difficult was they said it was just a bunch of nice guys doing the tail kicking. And, and that was, I, that probably meant as much to me because that means we were doing it with some class. And um, a lot of times when you run into really, really good teams, it's uh, it's not a fun experience to be on the other end of that. And these guys did it with class. And um, and and last but not least, um, was just the community support led by you guys, um, all the people. I, I've literally never seen anything quite like it. We, you know, a couple um, people in the community said we should try to get a charter bus. And I think within 48 hours, we had $10,000 raised for that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's just amazing to me that, that, uh, you know, sometimes I think Waynesboro gets a bad rap as a community. I believe that. I think we're a hidden gem that, um, has always stepped up when, when the need is there and, um, the support was, was, uh, really felt. And so I'm very, very grateful to everybody who uh, provided that support throughout the year so you guys can see their names up there i don't know if you want me to do them individually or how you want to do it you want to be here to 11 o'clock i can yeah. keep talking it's up to you um but it but again um I, i'll call them up i'll call them up then jaylon bean i'll just read it off the board there <laughs> jaylon bean cooper huff baron parks tanya shaw evan stein alex torbica will campbell javon McIver, Ryan Schaefer, Kellen Smith, Grant Thompson, and Michael Young. They were the 12 guys that, uh, that made up the uh, this year's varsity team. Uh, fourth place in the district and the first time we ever qualified for, for the state playoffs in school history. So you can see the individual recognition and um, it was just a, just a pretty cool year. And we thank you guys for all your support. Thank you. Dr. McCallum, I think I think it might work best because it's actually the lighting's better outside, and we have the the athletic banner as well. So, okay. picture at the end, yeah, or at the end. Oh, well, what you can do it now. That's fine. We're good. I like that answer. <laughs> yeah. All right, next up, we're going to continue with our, our winter sports um, with the girls basketball. All right. Um, I don't know if you had an opportunity to come to any of our girls basketball games, um, but if you did, uh, you would see a much improved squad over this over the past couple of years that they've gone through. And then you saw number four, Nikki Davis, leading the charge. Um, the girls had eight wins this season, including a championship over the in their winter tournament, they won their winter tournament, which was really cool to see. See those girls excited. Um, hold up that trophy. Uh, Nikki Davis led the team in the majority of the categories. Uh, she scored 174 points, bringing her career total up to 385. Um, she led the team in assists with 70, so she was scoring and dishing it off. Was voted by her teammates as the defensive MVP. Was second on the team in steals. Led the team with 43 rebounds. And... No, 43 steals, sorry, 110 rebounds and deflections. Um, Nikki's also, she's also an all-star soccer selection for the fall. And uh, the good thing is, is she's only a sophomore, so we're going to get to see her compete for two more years. So uh, Nikki's not here, so I'll give the certificate to Coach Davis, and uh, that'd be great. So Nikki Davis did a great job, so thank you. Don't believe Coach Swink is here, or, or the wrestlers are here. But I just want to, again, kind of just go over wrestling. 
Uh, we have a very young squad, which is exciting for the years coming forward. We have a, a young, but we have we have 80 kids involved in our youth program, which is, again, really cool to see. So we split them up on Mondays and Wednesdays. We have 40 kids. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have 40 different kids in that wrestling room. So uh, the foundation for our wrestling program is is very solid. And Coach Swink and Coach Mowen do a great job with our high school team. And uh, again, looking forward to where they are. They finished 13 and nine this year. A uh, lot of scraps, a lot of, lot of great matches. If you get a chance to come to some of our home wrestling matches, it's, it's pretty intense and they do a great job with it. But uh, again, finishing 13 and nine, uh, young team and uh, had some really breakout performances. Um, and all these, again, with, with the awards that they received, these are all voted on by coaches from the other teams that we compete against. Our coaches cannot vote for our own kids. So all of these selections in every sport are voted on by coaches of the opposing teams that we play. So um, again, that's just an awesome recognition that we had. We had six um, athletes that made it to districts and um, let me just go through and, and read off, you know, our honorable mention was Joan Ballard. We had Isaac Bautista. Stephen Howard, Garrett Lowens, Titus Mong, Calvin Myers, uh, Garrett Price, and Jaden Rooney. Um, and so I'll get these to the to our athletes. But again, a great job that we had, and, and looking forward for a tremendous season. They're already back in the room um, and going at it already. So that's a good thing. All right, next up, we have Jess Bryan come on up with our gymnastics team. And some of our coaches weren't able to be here, so they either have uh, some of their assistant coaches coming in um, to recognize their athletes. Okay. Um, so we uh, we had a really good season and we took it the whole way to States. And as you can see, we took first. But I want to say that in the past years, there have been years that we've like just killed it. And, you know, we were way above. This time we went in knowing that it was going to be very close and a good possibility we're not going to. Um, but I always have faith in these girls. And we even had a little bit of a rough start on beam. And as we don't enjoy starting on beam, but <laughs> um, we won by, a, I think it was like seven tenths. So it was a super close meet. I mean, it was down to when they were announcing, like we're literally are sitting there like, was it enough? And Yep, and they pulled it through. Um, and I never had a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we do have a couple that are on vacation. Um, we have freshman Ellie Siri. Uh, she competed at the bronze vault level. We had sophomore Lily McFarland. Um, she competed the silver vault. We have sophomore Cameron Bonner and she competed at the diamond all around level and dime the different levels diamond is our highest is the highest level um we had junior Emily Knott <laughs> um, she competed the silver vault and floor and Annabelle Lutz Junior, she was a silver vault and beam. Um, we have our senior Ella Blades, who uh, competed our bronze vault. Senior Brooke Bonner, uh, she competed the silver vault. 
and um, Senior Alasia Ward, and she competed our silver ball. Then we also had um, girls that placed. Um, freshman Kaden Kettleman, she competed the silver all around and she placed eighth on B. Then we have our junior Jada Krager, three sport athlete. Um, she competed the diamond all around and she placed seventh all around, which again is the hardest level. And she was our vault champion. So she's our state vault champion. <clears throat> and she also was our team high scorer for the season. <laughs> okay. We have junior Annie Myers. To say she was kind of hiding back. Um, she competed the bronze all around. She placed second all around third on vault and bars, and was our beam champion. So she is also a state first place. <laughs> and then to my senior, Bella Bonner. Yes, I, I called her my baby chicken all season. And now my baby chicken is flying away. Um, <laughs> She competed the gold all around and she placed second all around. She was the floor champion and she successfully defended her title on bars, winning that event to repeat as the gold Div division bar champion. We're gonna miss. Um, I know. Well, and I already miss her, like, because she goes to Rainbow, and so her season ended in March. And why? Anyway, and practices have not been the same. <laughs> Next year, please come out and watch us. We're fun to watch. They're fun to watch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I can have uh, Coach Sarah Staines come on up for swimming. All right. Thank you uh, for your continued support of the Waynesboro um, High School Boys and Girls Swim Teams. This season, the girls swim team ended their second season undefeated uh, with a record of 11 and 0. When, um, when <laughs> thank you, yes. <laughs> um, winning the Mid Penn Colonial Division Championship, um, being their first year in the division. Um, the girls' swim team had four swimmers qualify for districts. Maya Beck, Brenna Nadio, Eve Phillips, and Emma Swanson. Maya Beck qualified for districts in the 100 freestyle. Brenna Nadio qualified for districts in the 50 freestyle. And Eve Phillips qualified for districts in the 100 fly, finishing in sixth place, and the 100 freestyle, finishing in third place. Um, and the addition, in addition to the individual events, um, the girls team had two district relays or qu relays qualify for districts. And the team of Maya Beck, Emma Swanson, Brennan Nadio, and Eve Phillips swam the 200 freestyle relay and the 400 freestyle relay at districts, um, making podium and placing eighth in the 200 freestyle relay. Eve Phillips, right here, uh, moved on to the PIW. PIAA state championship swim meet where she swam the 100 fly and 100 freestyle 
finaling in, finaling in both events. Um, and she placed 13th in the state in the 100 fly and 11th in the 100 freestyle. <clears throat> Um, our girls team, I just want to recognize all of the girls um, this year. We had on our team Maya Beck, Kylie Beer, um, Addie Calloway, Ashlyn Carball, Mia Gopelt, um, who was an exchange student with us this year from Germany, um, Bell Hess, Jay Kelly, Brenna Nadio, Eve Phillips, Delaney Staines, Maddie Stoops, Emma Swanson, and Cassidy Wheeler. Um, swimming is while you swim individually, it truly is a team sport and it took every one of these girls to be able to win the meets and the colonial division championship so they really did work together as a team to make that happen. Um, our boys team also had a successful season um, this year our boy last year our boys had we had six boys on the team and this year we more than doubled and had 15 boys on the swim team, which made a huge difference when it came to competing. Um, the boys finished their season with a record of eight and two um, and are looking to have another successful season this coming year. Um, and the boys team had two district qualifiers Brenner Macawam and JB Bonner. Brenner qualified for districts in the 50 freestyle and JB qualified for districts in the 200 meter IM. So again, I just wanna thank you for your continued support of the swim team. Um, this was the first year that we were able to host home swim meets um, and we hosted five meets at the YMCA. Um, and I will tell you the support from the community and from the student body was incredible. Um, it's the first time I've ever been at a high school swim meet where we've had a student cheering section because um, most most team most schools do not have people come out um, and support their swim team the way that our swim team was supported. So I just want to continue to thank everyone for their continued support, and we look forward to continuing with the student section at our swim meets. So thank you. Thank you. All right, now we're into our spring sports. So if I can have our baseball coach, I know Travis wasn't able to come, but we have uh, Joe Wetzel here to talk about our baseball team. Good evening, everybody. Uh, joining me up here tonight is Okanauer and Devin Weinkoop. Uh, the varsity baseball team, we finished with a 10 and 10 record this year, uh, including a seven and three record at home. So we did very well at home, struggled a little bit on the road, but that's that's bound to happen at times. Um, we had a total of nine of our 20 games decided by two runs or less. Five of those we won, four of those we ended up losing. Uh, right now we have a very, I'd say relatively young team that definitely battled through a roller coaster season, all while gaining valuable experience that I think is going to pay off significantly come next year. We took a little bit of a, some bumps and bruises along the way this year, but it's all valuable experience on the baseball field. Um, personal honors, we had Mason Gokenauer and Ethan Hotchkiss earned second team all-colonial all-star honors, and Logan Clapsaddle earned third team honors. Um, Ethan and Logan were not able to make it tonight. Mason, as stated earlier, is here with me, um, was one of our more valuable members of the team. Uh, besides being our leadoff hitter and playing outfield, he was also our number one pitcher with a five and two record and a 2.27 ERA. With that being said, I'd like to thank everybody here tonight for your continued support, as well as the community's support of the Wayne's Bar Baseball Program. Thank you. You know, Coach McRoy is in Richmond on business, so Shelly Barnhart will be come on down for softball.
Well, this was all put together just a short bit ago. So I'm just going through with, with uh, what Mr. McElroy uh, had given me. So our season recap, um, we had our ups and downs this season and would summarize this year as a roller coaster. Uh, we settled in mid season and certainly grew as a team and learned some valuable lessons that sports often teach you. On the field, we won eight out of our last 12 games and finished 11 and nine just outside of the playoffs. More importantly, all but one of the varsity members, members were on honor roll or higher during the season. The young ladies that are behind me, there are three, but one could not make it tonight, um, represent the maiden softball program on and off the field. Uh, Carson Moore uh, was an honorable mention, a senior, um, Carson is a vocal senior leader who took all college courses during the year, and unfortunately, she was um, is coming home from vacation. Um, on our second team, which is Abby McElroy, Abby led by example and is a constant positive influence on and off the field. Abby maintained a 105 GPA while challenging herself with honors and AP classes. Our first team is Riley Shetler, again, leads by example and has an internal drive that keeps her striving to get better. She's a great teammate, valuable mentor, and solid student earning honor roll with high honors. These are our softball representatives. I do want to thank you all for your continued support um, for the years to come. Thank you very much. <laughs> In our final group, uh, Coach uh, Rickett, you want to come up with your crew? And the spring is the hardest of all the seasons, in my opinion, because you start out and it's snowing and then you finish up and it's about 90 degrees. So they got to run the gamut. Hi, everyone. Um, first off, uh, thank you for your uh, continued support, um, as you guys do every year. For all the athletics. Um, each year, uh, as we progress, the program has, has gone through ups and downs over the last four years I took over. This year, we started off this with 100. That wow. number, I don't think that number's been accomplished for 12 years or take a few and that's it's their to their credit you know they word of mouth gets around how the program's going how everything's being done um we give all the credit to these without them we wouldn't have had the season <clears throat> we did uh the girls team finished five and one just missing out on one uh conference title um which puts them next year as the favorites to win um yeah, no pressure. Uh, <laughs> Shippensburg's loaded. Uh, that their team this year um, pushed us to the limits for the girls. They fortunately, and I say that in a nice way, they lose seniors. We have no seniors going forward this year, so all of the girls are back. Uh, it's the the hopes and possibilities for that group next year is very high. So a little pressure on you. Um, the guys were four and two. Um, we dealt with our nemesis, Greencastle and Shippensburg again, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, they did what they can. Um, we were pretty much led by just a handful of the guys. Uh, two of them are standing here and unfortunately they're leaving us. So we lose a lot with just these two next year. So hopefully we'll get some individuals that will step up, um, help the, the uh, help the boys team and, lead them uh to what we hope can be done um as far as the districts and so forth we are missing two of our indiv individuals here today uh true bench off who qualified last year in the state meet and the 300 hurdles is on vacation um we actually looked at the numbers this year had she run her time that she ran last year she would have only been seventh this year in the district where last year she was second that gives you an idea of how strong District 3 is, 
especially encompassing our track and field area that goes all the way from basically Mercersburg up past Harrisburg. So we cover one of the largest areas in the state as far as just our districts alone. And the competition is absolutely unbelievable. Um, so True will be back. Um, hopefully the same thing with her next year in the hurdles. Um, heavens knows what other events we might be able to find her in. Um, the other individual that's not here is a sophomore, uh, and that's Ben uh, Williams. Um, he qualified for districts in the Javelin. Um, that was a nice surprise for us this year. He kind of came out of nowhere. Canyon uh, was kind of his mentor a little bit, helped him out, uh, got him started. Um, ben threw well enough at districts that he made the finals um, and we thought he might have a shot at making states because if you're in the top five in our district meet, you qualify um, automatically for states. He was sitting in seventh going into the final throws and unfortunately got bumped down to ninth where he finished. So good, you know, good for him being there. Um, it's a good start for him. So hopefully next year he can just get that one little progression farther um, to get to the state meet. So the other side of that for him is He's been working with uh, Coach Dennis. He is actually qualified for the national meet held up in Philadelphia this year. Um, that was a late decision that they decided to do. Um, that meet is it's uh, it's a rising stars division. So for the younger athletes, with Javelin only having 17 states in the country that have that event, it's I don't want to use the word easier to get into. Um, but the qualifying standard is a little bit easier than what it is even for like our state meet because of us having it the way we do. Um, but at this point, he is working on doing that meet this coming weekend up in Philly. So hopefully, you know, he gets some good experience and we'll learn for that, learn a lot for that um, coming in the next season. Individuals I have here with me, um, three of them you guys have already heard a lot about. So uh, I'll just go through it real quick. Jada Krigger was my qualifier in the 100 meters and the pole vault, um, returning senior next year. So with her leading the way, I think uh, the possibilities there are endless for her. The confidence thing, but we know this. Uh, <laughs> second, Gracie French. She is my 100-200 runner. She qualified in the 200 for districts. Um, these two young ladies are the foundation for our relay team. Um, they've been together for the last couple of years, and I think if we can just get a couple pieces together, uh, that, that team has been very close to the school record the last couple of years. And I know it's something they desperately, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the girls, like I said, the girls have a, a lot of potential for next year. The gentlemen behind us are our seniors you guys, unfortunately are leaving, So you got Tanya and Shaw. <clears throat> excuse me, Tanya Shaw, who qualified in the Javelin um, the last two years, actually. So he's he's the big experienced gentleman for the field events that, unfortunately, we've got to say goodbye to. He is playing basketball in college, but I think you're also going to dabble a little bit in track, too. So he's <laughs> going to continue that a little bit as, as a multi-sport athlete in college. So good luck to him. That's going to be a little difficult, but I think he can. And we have Jalen Bean here. Um, he was our not not just our district qualifier, but our state qualifier in the jow, or in the uh, triple jump. So this young man finished eighth at states, so he ended up getting a medal. Um, it was a a very tough competition. The state winner was out of our district, so the gentleman was from Chambersburg. So these two competed against each other all year long. Actually, are friends, aren't? <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of makes it even more interesting um but interesting enough he's playing football in college so he will be attending robert morris with a football scholarship so good luck to him um if that doesn't work we'll try to work on the track side <laughs> so again my thank you to all of you for our, your support thank you to you guys without you and your efforts our program would not have shot up the way it has the last four years so thank you very much. All right, again, thanks for having us. We really appreciate you allowing us our time to kind of showcase some of our student athletes and uh, allow us to come out in front. So 
Uh, as you can see, our coaches are very passionate and they love their kids and they love their athletes and they love what they do here at Waynesboro. So thank you. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so we included band and choir in our recognition. I'm not sure if they were on the list, but I also wanna give a shout out to our color guard. I'm not exactly sure how many competitions they were in, but they were only not first place in one. I think there wow. were six. So that's pretty impressive. They traveled pretty far and have a lot of props and things and it's really impressive. So we'll start off with those of our learners who went to County Chorus. So that was Emily Bechtel, Kaylin Bowie, Kai Dennis, Mar Mar I'm sorry, Mariah Fortney, Donathan Horvath, Chloe Keckler, Sarah Politicchio, Aria Roll, Hunter Rogers, Kellen Stevens, Maddie Stoops, Zoe S Sakura, Janaya Tichi Shumway, Cassidy Wheeler, Harmony Wong, and Kayla Zarger. Oh, thank you so much. So then we can go on to County Band, which we hosted this year, which was always lovely. We had Anna Avey, Emily Bechtel, Sam Black, Ava Brandis, Haley Brannon, Kate Seary, TJ Cox, Ella Dingson, Olivia Dingson, Anna Enfus, Mariah Fortney, Nicole Gutierrez, Jonathan Horvath, Matt Imwald, Chloe Keckler, Jude Martin, James Miller, Joel Motes, Adriana Muir, Rachel Nunemaker, Sarah Palticcio, Jada Twig, Josh Webb, and Cassidy Wheeler. So Rachel's certificate is separate because for the first time, the high school, the music department really did a concerto competition where students who play any instrument were allowed to compete. They were adjudicated by members of our staff and Rachel Nunemaker won that competition in December. So she had the opportunity to prepare a piece that she was accompanied by the full wind ensemble. So that was really, uh, I've never seen anything like that before. So getting to hear that in the spring concert was really exciting. Um, Sam Black was a member of our band who made it all the way to the District 7 Band Festival. Of him, Mr. Ritter indicated that playing the trombone, he was both the, uh, he had leadership within the department and um, a positive impact on everything at Washes. He was also in the pit orchestra for Matilda, which we don't often have students who have the ability to play professional level music. So that was really exciting. And Anna Enfus, I bet I have your certificate over here too, because she was our other student who went on to the upper band festival for district seven on the clarinet. I think I got everybody. Yes, that's everybody. Did I miss Kayla? County band? County choir, I did miss her on there. Kayla also accompanied the choir at our spring concert. And I know Kayla, but I did not know that she played the piano. And ooh, does she do an excellent job? I found her.
Thank you. Okay, we uh, once again, we congratulate all of our award recipients this morning, uh, this morning, <laughs> <laughs> this evening. Okay, shall we pause for a minute? <laughs> okay, thank you. And let's move on to our business. First, um, job description. Thank you, Mr. That, Smith. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, actually this job description is listed prior to the personnel items. Um, I had um, explained in a Friday folder, we had uh, created some additional responsibilities under the special education access clerk uh, to move her from a range five to a range four. So therefore this is the updated um, job description that essentially reflects the uh, job responsibilities for this position. So my recommendation is to approve the uh, revised job description as listed. Okay, is there a motion to approve this position? Move to approve. Any question, comments? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, next, we move to personnel. Dr. Deshaun. Hey, good evening, everybody. Yeah, so we have a, a list of uh, personnel items here uh, to put forth for your approval. Uh, we have two uh, professional staff resignations. Uh, uh, Shannon and uh, Rock and Laura McHenry from the high school um, and one from the middle school. Uh, we appreciate their time with us and we wish them the best as they move on. Uh, another resignation is a supervisory staff position, which is Daniel McFerrin. I got to know a, a, a little bit about Daniel over the few months and uh, that this young lady has skills. I can tell you that much. And uh, I know she's going to be missed also. Uh, and Dr. Sterner Hine has echoed that uh, numerous times, I know. So uh, we also have nine support uh, staff resignations and one extracurricular staff resignation, many of them being uh, paraeducator positions. Uh, we have uh, three uh, folks we're asking you to look at for uh, some reassignments and adjustments, one being a receptionist, kitchen manager, and access clerk. And uh, we uh, are asking to look at the two folks, uh, Pauline Baker, Penny Horn, uh, some adjustment for hours uh, to support staff folks. Um, we also are asking to uh, uh, appoint a supervisory staff position, which is Brittany Fagan. Fagan, uh, she will be uh, in the working in the business office as a business office accounting manager. Uh, we have 15 summer staff appointments, uh, an extracurricular team leader position, and a substitute staff support position. We're looking uh, for your approval for. And then uh, we also want to thank and acknowledge uh, Carl Kramer. Uh, a uh, custodian at the senior high school, uh, 32 years of service within the district. So uh, we appreciate uh, Mr. Kramer and his years of service to Waynesboro Area School District. And then last but not least, uh, we're looking to move forward. Wesley Newman uh, for a mathematics position at the senior high school. We appreciate the opportunity going through the process with him and interviewing him and believe he will do a, a nice job for us in the district. So. So we're looking uh, for your approval for, for those. Okay, is there a motion to approve the personnel as listed? Move to approve. Second. Any questions, comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, move down to wheelchair accessible van. Thank you very much, sir. Um, so the uh, we do have a wheelchair accessible van the dis district has now. We bought that used. Um, we received a lot of donations for that vehicle. It's come in very handy. We use that on a daily basis um, to provide some uh, transportation needs in the district, both for regular transportation and then as well as for different trips that our students take uh, throughout the district uh, during the day. Um, but we do have a need for a second one. Um, we did a little homework and we found out that um, you know medical access funds. Um, can only be used for certain purposes. 
we found out that transportation is one of those items if it applies to a student who has an IEP or 504 plan that requires such transportation. Um, we do have enough funds in there to certainly go ahead and put towards a wheelchair accessible van. Again, this is for medical access funds that we receive by providing services in the district for students that qualify for medical access funding, and then the state puts those funds into an account for us. We draw those down every year, and we typically draw those down to pay for an actual, um, typically like a supervision position in the special ed department. We still have enough funds for that, but just the nature of the funds have been building a little bit, so we do feel we have additional funds. Um, this is really a request for the van itself is coming from the uh, special ed department, and we kind of worked in unison a little bit here to talk about uh, what funds could be used. Medical access seems to be the best item, best route for us. So our request is to basically go out there, take a look and see if we can find something that will qualify. We have to go through a bidding process because it's federal funds. We'd have to go down through all those different types of steps and then bring it back to you. So is there a motion to approve the district to seek a use wheelchair accessible van used in medical access fund? Move to approve. Second. Any questions? Mr. Holzman, comment. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Next, is this a Vedum Student Club? Dr. Yes. Dr. Yes. This is a Vedum Student Club. We they uh, was put forth before the uh, academic committee. Uh, we had a number of discussions on it. Um, it is a group. I I'll tell you what. If you open up, I don't know if you get to see it or not, but the code of conduct on there. And um, if you read the purpose of VEDM, it's basically uh, to support all students, no matter what, whatever they're going through. I was originally um, a group that was started, I, I forget what district it was started out of, but it's it's a, a club that's been kind of adopted in a number of school districts to help initially to support students who were considering or thinking about suicide. And that was kind of the birth of this club, but extends beyond just, you know, uh, folks this, this kid's going through a tough time or whatever. But um, if you read, Avita members will always, um, if we could have every single student, every single adult in the world adhere to what Avita club members will always say they will do, I think we would have a fantastic, wonderful, super place. And we have a pretty good place right now. So if we do this, it's going to even be greater, right? So, but it's really about being supportive, showing care towards other people. Um, Noticing other people, making people feel value uh, so they can reach out to others who are hurting and alone, <clears throat> be a good listener, try to see others' points of view. And remember, we don't need to just again, I can go on there, but that's the main gist of it. I know uh, 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 Mrs. Harold and Dr. Royer and others were involved in the discussions around this. So we're seeking your approval for this club to be approved. Uh, the bylaws are on here as well as the code of conduct. Uh, recently, this uh, just a few weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. Uh, there was a group that did an Avedum walk, not as a part of a club because the club is not officially recognized, but to raise money for the Avedum organization overall. And I got to be a part of that uh, for part of the day over there. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions about that or before you vote or. Okay, let's go ahead and um, can we get a motion to approve the Avedum Student Club? Move to approve. Second. Questions? Quick question, who's the advisor for the club? It's Mrs. Eddie. I can't remember. It's the guidance council. Okay. Thank you. Uh, here's a here's a ridiculous question. So if you don't uphold all those things they <laughs> promised, <laughs> like you will be put on place on probation. <laughs> <laughs> it even says it right there. <laughs> Beating members who do not meet these standards will be placed on probation. Ooh, okay. Miss that part. Huh? Any other questions? Dr. Additional? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And now we move down to the class action litigation META social media. That, that would be. Dr. Stern, thank you. Um, so at the last board meeting, I had provided some information indicating that our solicitor had um, essentially provided information about joining a social media class action lawsuit. Um, and essentially, uh, the resolution is there. Uh, the litigation is to uphold the M 
ETA platforms responsible for what has been perceived as them designing, refining, and operating social platforms to exploit the neuropsychology of a brain reward system to keep users coming back, coming back frequently, and staying on the respective platforms as long as possible. So essentially, our involvement um, is is in light of the fact that social media has considerably, considerably disrupted the school environment. And so therefore, uh, my recommendation is to, to essentially join the class action lawsuit. Ultimately, we as the adults in charge of our own children, of our own learners, are the responsible parties. However, um, we do feel that, or I, I personally feel that um, social media does have to have some responsibility um, you know, moving forward um, in light of the unfortunate disruptions it has created within the school system. So my recommendation is that the, the board approve the resolution as presented in the attachment. Okay, is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. <laughs> Second. Second. Questions? Just as a matter of discussion, um, I will be voting no on this. Um, and I have, I try to be clear and concise. So while I support caring for our students and I share many of the same concerns about student mental health, as well as the challenges of social media, I don't support joining the class action lawsuit. Um, and I have four reasons. One, I am concerned with how litigious we are as a society, um, we in our current culture, uh, if we don't like something, the answer seems to be quickly go to a lawsuit. Um, I'm not convinced that the courts are the answer to every problem. And I worry what we are teaching and what precedent we are setting to our students uh, that a lawsuit will solve problems. Second, I'm unsure of the merits and the benefits of this lawsuit and what it will actually accomplish. Um, as we kind of read through the, the letter from uh, the attorney, um, the solicitor, litigation is to hold the various social media companies accountable uh, for inducing young people to compulsively use their services. And then as a part of the resolution, it says claiming monetary damages related to school district costs and expenses related to the use of social media platforms by students. Um, I'm not sure what is meant by holding them accountable. If we just say, hey, you owe a bunch of money. I'm not sure what that actually accomplishes. Um, uh, how does that hold company, uh, even if it is successful, um, what will actually change? Because nothing legislatively will have changed. They essentially will just be fined, but they could continue. Um, and then just as a, a side note of the um, companies that are listed, um, Alphabet, which owns uh, Google and YouTube, uh, we as a district have Chromebooks. We use Google products and we look at videos on YouTube. And so we are suing someone that we actively use. <laughs> uh, third, I worry that a lawsuit can be perceived as abdicating our responsibility as leaders, educators, and parents and guardians. I agree that these companies share in the responsibility of the current mental health crisis, but what about our responsibility as leaders and educators to teach about wise usage what about our responsibility as parents and guardians to monitor what our children and students are doing online and enforce limits and restrictions on their use? Uh, a lawsuit feels like blame shifting all of the responsibility to these companies, and they do share responsibility, but I think there's also blame that resides in us as educators, parents, and leaders. Um, and then my, my last point, I don't think social media is a neutral product but it's also just a medium. You know, as a school district, um, recipient as a school district, as a board member, uh, and teachers and students, I think, have been recipients of negative uh, content on social media. But let's remember that the authors are also people. Uh, these are often our neighbors, our fellow students, sometimes our fellow teachers. Um, and so while the medium can be improved and things about the medium can be changed. This is also a local problem, a school problem, a community problem and how we communicate and relate to one another. Um, and I believe the best results come from us, not from a national class action lawsuit. So again, while I want the best for our students, I don't think this is an answer. Um, and so I will be voting no on the resolution. 
Thank you. All right. Appreciate any other comments or questions. Okay. All right. So uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Okay, now we move down to the Modern Group Preventative Maintenance Agreement. Dr. Postman? Yes, sir. Thank you. So this is our annual agreement. Um, we have changed over to Modern Group um, probably just a couple years ago. Um, they do the preventative maintenance on our generators. Typically, it's a twice a year program that they come out. Um, we're required to have emergency generators in every building to run life safety equipment. Um, and uh, there will probably be a slight change or slight tweak in terms of some of you, because we do have some issues with that generator right now. And we're gonna look at some other options. So most likely there'll be a small change in that, um, probably a delayed service on that because we don't need one at the moment for that because we're using our portable generator. But for the most part, the uh, agreement itself is pretty whole. And again, we wanna get these services started for the other buildings here for this uh -huh. summer. So we're asking for approval of the uh, okay. one-year contract. So the uh, motion to is to approve uh, the emergency generator for in the tune of $4,360. We have a motion. Move to approve. Second. Questions for Dr. Hoffman? <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move down to the revise, the revision of the revise. Is this right? Okay, all right. So it's, it's, it's actually uh, right. from a revision perspective, all it is, it's reflecting that uh, traditionally in the Waynesboro School District, um, after we, we settle on an operational calendar, we look at the, the dates and then essentially look at uh, creating early dismissal dates. So the only difference mm -hmm. in this calendar, as opposed to the one that we prior, uh, we approved, is we added two early dismissal dates are designated as an E, that would be October 20th. And March 1st. So that's the only change to the operational calendar. Uh, fortunately, uh, because we, the way we strategically set up our Act 80 days and um, some teacher and services that in the past we've had more early dismissal days, this will have, um, in this calendar, we will only have two. So the recommendation is to approve the operational calendar with the two additional um, early dismissal days of October 20th and March 1st. Okay, so is, is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Um, I also noticed that then the last day of school is another full day, just like this year. That is correct. Okay. So uh, ultimately, um, we're in a unique situation next school year where we have two built-in snow days and then we move to our five bid days. Um, all reports as of this point is that our um, the, the way we had made the adjustment to allow Thursday to be a full day and then an early dismissal day, the final day, I, I may come back for board permission. I do not want to prematurely make any decisions to the end of the year because if we utilize our two snow days, our five fit days, then I am adding or we will be adding days to the end of the school. So there may there more to come. Very good. Let me get Thank through. You. Let me get through April, and we'll be we'll we we'll be, might be revising it one more time. But no uh, <laughs> I felt that uh, that uh, that last day um, a, a lot of positive um, feedback from having a final full day of school, um, and then obviously from a graduation perspective and some things that we had to do from a professional learning perspective. It was nice to be able to have our celebration day and then be able to roll into some professional learning before graduation. So more to come. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? If there are no comments, speak up now or hold your comments until spring 2024. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Now we move to the uh, revised 2023-24. I'm sorry. Uh, Laurel Light contracts for 23-24. Thank you, Mr. Smith. So uh, essentially what we were looking at is the uh, yearly contract for Laurel Life at the high school, Laurel Life at the middle school. Um, this is referred to as Laurel Life, but the, this is our Inspire classrooms. Mm -hmm. So uh, the recommendation is to approve or continue the partnership 
uh, with Laura Life to provide the Inspire classroom at the senior high school as well as the middle school. All right. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Questions? I have one. Um, so the Inspire program, my understanding is elementary school, it's working beautifully. Middle school, it's doing pretty well. High school, I don't think is as successful because my understanding is that a lot of these kids are coming in from other districts. However, I assume that this is the most cost effective way of dealing with these students. Is that so the way it's, it's set up, it is considered a trauma-informed classroom. Um, ultimately, um, it's to be a transition classroom so that if a student um, is an Inspire student, the hope would be that they would transition out. Um, we um, continue to have challenges, whether it is mental health related, um, homelessness, um, there's all sorts of things that contribute to trauma in children uh, or young adults as well. Um, so, I mean, ultimately, I feel that we have made a lot of progress. We're going to continue to have bumps in the road. Um, we're obligated to provide an education for these children. Yeah, but my the bottom line was this is probably the most cost effective way of educating it, these students. Correct. I would. I. I. My. Would, it's my professional opinion that it it is a a costly program, and but when you do the cost benefit analysis, it is far more cost effective to keep them here in the Waynesbury School District than it would be to look for alternative settings. And I think we are in the same position as so many school districts right now where like alternative setting, settings aren't necessarily willing or even able to take on additional students. So it's okay, you answered my okay. question <laughs> just because that's what I thought it would be, yes. But I, but I also think that this, these classrooms are able to uh, support students that we did not have them, they would not be placed elsewhere. They would just, they would just would not get the support. Oh, which they so, need. And, so from and that perspective, is. it may not appear cost, cost efficient, um, but I don't know that you can put a price on. I agree. And also when we, when we bought into this, I think we were only one of 17 in the state um, that was running this kind of program. And I assure you, or I don't have statistics, but there's got to be more than that now. So, and one comment made by, uh, I've heard several elementary people, middle school, they're very, very, very grateful that we have this program um, because really it meets the needs of all the kids, whether they're in the program or some who are not in the program. So. Uh, yeah, I did not bring that question up because I don't support the program. I I think it's done wonders in elementary and middle school. I was just questioning high school aspect of it, but I think that it's probably our best alternative. Yeah, it, what, I'm, what I'm hearing is um, sort of anecdotal um, data about the program. I think uh, going forward, uh, maybe we could create like maybe baseline data. We don't already have it down um, so that we could kind of measure the impact of the program going forward so that when we have people, whether community or what, who are questioning the amount of money or whatever that's being, um, you know, designated for the program that we can kind of show it's effective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I thought it was interesting that and we did have some Inspire students who graduated and the master level therapist and the teacher was, they were both present at graduation. Um, uh, and they, they're contracted services, so they, they weren't obligated to come, but that's a testimony to their commitment um, to our learners and to the program, so. Actually, that's a good answer to the fact that they, I'm graduate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. um, any other comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And now we move to the River Rock contract for 23-24. Okay, so with River Rock, that is a considered an ADY, which is an alternative placement uh, for students who essentially uh, become or have 
uh, are policy violator, violators within the Waynesbury School District. So this contract will secure um, five slots, whether or not we want to utilize those slots at Newville or Carlisle. Um, it's an agreement to provide education outside of the Waynesboro Area School District for learners who have exhausted um, our alternatives here within the district or uh, due to disciplinary action made choices that um, require a, a, a different placement for a period of time. So the recommendation is to renew the contract. Um, we Last year was our first year partnering with uh, River Rock and i um, very pleased to say that Ms. States did an outstanding job at managing um, meeting with the parents, meeting with the um, River Rock staff, meeting with the learners. And um, so my recommendation is to renew this, this contract uh, for 2023-24. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, and so next we move for discussion only. Um, the first reading of policy two one two seventeen. Dr. Royer, do you want me to take that or? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So um, two seventeen is the um, graduation requirements that. First reading of it was changed to reflect uh, the change in credit school box scheduling. Also, removing some language that is no longer appropriate because of the number of students we have doing uh, dual and college courses left it pretty open. Uh, the graduation requirements were um, what meeting the, the district requirements, whatever program. Um, and then we attached a document to it from the high school, I believe it's from the handbook, um, that outlines this graduation requirements for the next years. So people have that because right now, much everybody's gonna be something different for the next year. Um, and then probably I would assume we back then in 2027 and change again. Any questions or comments? So just to clarify that second document is how we're phasing this in over the Correct. next four years. Okay. Yeah, the say, <clears throat> what happens is is the the policy just states based on district requirements, and then it says the requirements are outlined, um, and that document will be linked to the policy. Sure. Um, in Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. All right. So we move down to uh, the second reading of policies one thirty seven. 137, 1, 2, and 3, and 831. Um, yeah, these are second readings on all these policies. We do not receive any feedback from board members or public. It's home education programs. Um, as we discuss these, there are changes for next year um, that our home school can attend for 25% of the day. Um, Aaron put together some great documents um, that will assist the high school principal and states um, in keeping track. I think probably the most interesting policy that parents are going to have to submit the eligibility um, for their students to participate in, in curricular activities um, and sports. I'm not quite sure who's going to be in charge of monitoring that, um, but we'll need to put together a system in place so that um, I think it'll be, it will not become a problem until it's a problem. Someone forgets to turn it <laughs> Well, okay. do, I have a question. Sorry. Do, do they have to have like a portfolio or something of their work to show? I mean, obviously, somebody as far as the homeschooling goes. Yeah, they have to. Uh, they have to have their portfolio reviewed. It's actually, actually, at one point in time, we did the reviewing, yeah. um, and now they actually hire people to do them. I don't okay. know who these people are. Um, but and how but, often is that? Pardon? How often do they do every that? year? Just at, at the, the end, end of the year, yeah, the end not of the like year. during the. No, at the end of the okay. year. Um, it does outline that, you know, if you're not qualified to do homeschool, polio, you know, isn't up to, you know, legit, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's consequences to that, that you may be eligible. Okay. I'm not sure if it, you know, a lot more oversight than there was, you know, five or six years ago. Um, is it still a perfect system? 
I don't think so. I think Pennsylvania probably has liberal homeschool requirement. Like in oh. other words, it's because in light of the fact that we do have religious groups that elect to homeschool, I just know it's, it's far more challenging in other states. So this is actually, it's a little tighter now than it used to be. Um, do they have to opt out of the standardized testing then? They, they, they as a homeschooler, they're not required. So they're we've not had we've had homeschoolers who have elected to opt in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So we have to create opportunities for that. Um. But um, this is, some of these policies are are allowing homeschoolers to opt in to art class now, or um, they've always been able to participate in athletics. But as Dr. Royer suggested, like every student athlete has to be passing all their core subjects in order to, to participate. So that requirement now is the parent has to submit their eligibility report. So hopefully <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, they're cognizant of how their child is doing and whether or not they're qualified to play. So, so this past school year, particularly at the high school, have we had homeschool students participating in athletics very much? We, have, we do? Okay. Okay. And do they do well? I mean, they meet the requirements and, or has it been difficult? <laughs> okay. Um, I actually see it as an opportunity for some students to return. Okay. Sometimes they kind of get acclimated with a friend group and, mm -hmm. and feel a little bit more comfortable. So it's not many, but okay. we are also required to include our cyber charter students. <laughs> okay, okay. thank you. Anybody that does it for you know, like uh, music or not? Because I've had some of the past. We for... we don't hear because until this policy change because it's a class. So if we had anybody that we've had homeschooled students that have been in the all school production because that's a co an extracurricular activity, but because it was a class prior to this change, they could not participate in those things. Be interesting to see what happens. Any other questions? Okay. So is there a motion to approve the second reading of these policies? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We move down to Oracle um, elevator agreement. Dr. Osman, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. So um, we were using another company previously in a long-term agreement. Um, we're deciding to move into a different direction with another company. Um, because it's a new company to us, um, they did agree to approve it as a one-year agreement with the potential to do four one-year extensions on to that agreement. Um, typically, we like to form a relationship with them and continue. But again, it's a new relationship. So we um, would like to prefer to do it one year at a time, at least initially here. Um, the cost is the same going to this company from the previous company. Um, we have actually started to uh, have some discussions and had them come out and do some preliminary visits. Our maintenance department's pleased with them. So we're requesting to uh, approve this agreement. Okay. Um, so is there a motion to approve the elevator maintenance agreement? Move to approve. Second. Questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Next, we move to a supervisor's agreement for 2023 through 26. Dr. Oldman. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So um, in the district, we have several different employment groups. We have a you know, collective bargaining agreement that represents the teachers. We have a support staff group. Then we also have supervisors. And these um, sometimes are actually supervising processes or they're supervising individuals. So they're management individuals. We're paying them as a salary rate. Uh, we have eight individuals that are in this category. Um, we are uh, putting a proposal here um, based on discussions with them. Uh, the group came to us and had uh, what we thought I think were reasonable requests and um, Based on their uh, request, we put this together. Um, the salary increases in the agreement here match the uh, collective bargaining agreement inc increases over the next three years. So that's consistent with our approach from a staffing perspective. And then the other changes were very uh, minor and uh, um, they were important to the team, important to them. But again, from a financial perspective and from a management perspective, uh, we felt that those were something we could meet. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the comprehensive plan for the support services supervisors for 23? 2023 to 2026. Second. Questions? Okay, all those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And now we move to the <laughs> EDR lease with First American. Nick. Hey, how's it going? Down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is a, a three-year lease um, for our endpoint detection um, and response solution that we use, um, and this is for three years. Typically, it's bundled it in with our firewall, but they've now removed that, um, so I've worked with them to spread it out over three years um, and use a leasing company to kind of not be as big as of a cost for the district all at once, so this is... Um, I'm asking for approval for this lease. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the three-year lease? Move to approve. Second. Questions. Or... Mm -hmm. So is this a, is this an additional? This is software. Firewall? This is software for us. For? For our endpoint detection and um, response for the district. So typically it was included into the firewall. Now it is a separate piece, though it's not bundled with our firewall anymore. So it's a separate piece. It was included before the price. Coming and going mm -hmm. all the time with these darn leases, don't they? They change your software structure. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. you're you can't do anything about it. Not really. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> It is cheaper than it was last. last <laughs> I will say that. You should have left with them, Mr. Erickson. <laughs> okay, so again, back to you for weather station land use agreement with Penn State. Yes, um, with the facilities committee and uh, with Mr. McRae, uh, we were um, approached by a professor at Penn State. Um, they have a project going on where they're um, placing weather stations throughout the state. And um, they would like to place one here at Waynesboro. Uh, we met with um, Mr. Holtzman and um, Mr. DeAngelis and also Dr. Richardson um, to find a location here. They kind of wanted it between these three locations. We chose the middle school um, and a location that Mr. DeAngelis um, liked. And then we brought it to the facilities committee. And we've been waiting for three, four months now for this Please. agreement. So. Um, Beard, I can't remember their official title. Beard Attorney Group. Beard Attorney Group is still going through that. Um, so we're asking for your approval um, for this lease pending their approval um, for it. So um, once they sign off on it and everything, we can get Mr. Smith to sign it then. So that's what we're asking. Okay, so is there a motion to approve the land use agreement? Move to approve. Second. Second. Questions? Is there uh, money involved here? Nope. It's a zero dollar. So they don't pay us <laughs> no. to put their weather station on our property. No, they don't pay us. Um, I did include a picture in the Friday folder, I believe, um, at one point about it. Um, they're basically putting essentially three pillars in. They're going to obtain all the permits, the PA1 call, all of that. Um, to put it in and then they'll actually install it and it uses none of our, it's all solar and they do the cell service and basically they're just putting three pillars in the in the property so just that we did discuss this in facilities we there's no cost to us yeah um, but they are letting us use the data mm -hmm. oh. that's correct and yeah. so i think part of the agreement is our science teachers are able to use the data from this weather station that's for their students and for their classes that's yeah. good. Um, as well is that yes, correct that yeah. is correct. so i think that was part of our our thinking within the facilities there's no cost to us penn state's responsible for it mm -hmm. for the maintenance and all the costs, but then our teachers get to use it with our students. So okay. well, that's a plus. Yeah. yeah. And do you know if uh, like we'll have access, like if the folks in the district will have access to, like, you know, maybe click on a site or link or whatever that will give us the uh, data or information from that particular? Yes. Thing? Yes. There okay. is that. Um, I think when I did include all the pictures I didn't in this past Friday folder. But I did include a link to their current website. I can include it in this Friday folder for your information. You can see all the different. They actually, um, when we were at our Flight 93 um, retreat, 
I saw a weather station up on the hill and I was like, I wonder that. And then I got on the site and I was like, oh, that was one. That was so one there. So it was okay. pretty cool. So, okay. mm, yeah. And how big of an area does it take up? Or probably about this area right here in front of us. Okay. And so, sorry, because I didn't look at the picture. Where is it at the middle school? Um, it's actually going to be in the front um, field, right in the front. The hockey, the old hockey. Or the old one, yes. Mm -hmm. We We talked about that. <laughs> and we were talking about that at facilities. So that's where it's going to be at. Kind of where um, where the vault is for the, the water, um, where the fire company can get water from there. Uh, it's kind of the left of it on that high spot right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. When Todd Toth was high school, weather station. We still have that weather station here. Oh, do and we? we still do. Mm -hmm. okay. The weather bug. Is it used? Uh, it is not. Catherine uses at the middle school i think no. that's it but it's still live and we um it was probably about six years ago we had to buy a new camera for it mm -hmm. and put it up on the top of the high school to look at the football field so oh, yeah. any other questions thank you thank you uh so all those in favor aye aye, aye. any opposed Um, now we move down to financial business first, purchase orders and bills for payment. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, and if it, with your permission, I'll do one through four or. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have the normal bills uh, for the general fund as well as the cafeteria fund, as well as a lot of requisitions. Our apologies, but this is the requisition season now. Now that we have an approved budget, we're going through all the requisitions and submitting those to the board. And then once that gets approved, they can go out for July 1 purchase orders to get the supplies in for the start of the new school year. Um, we do have a good bit here. We all, we'll have more at the next meeting, unfortunately. So they are not all in yet. I, I know I'm still approving here some of the last two or three days, and they are not reflected in here. So they'll be reflected in the next meeting. Um, we also have a refund uh, with Washington Township. This was a property that uh, uh, sustained significant fire damage um, all the way back to, I think, August of last year. They did pay their taxes, um, and so then they were requesting a refund. Um, we feel it's appropriate to go ahead and provide the refund. Um, they still have to pay taxes on the land portion of the property at this point, so it's not the land. It's just the improvements on the land. Um, then we also have the normal occupational and per capita, per capita tax exonerations from J.P. Harris, and then finally, a property assessment change coming out of the uh, Franklin County Tax Assessment Office. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the financial business? Move to approve. Second. Questions and or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Now we move down to... Like cabinet comments, anyone? Nick reminded me I neglected to um, thank the board for giving um, admin team the opportunity uh, to visit the uh, Flight 93 Memorial. We had uh, an amazing day uh, with Dr. Mike McGuff, who um, spent time with us in the morning, um, obviously learning about um, that very unfortunate um, tragedy. However, learning from the perspective of everyday ordinary citizens and how remarkable um, their heroic efforts were that particular day and how they were able to essentially make a tremendous impact on our nation. Um, and it, it wasn't until I was there, I was, I mean, I understood, but it was like, it was, a, it was, a, it was a very moving day and there were 14 leadership um, pillars that he presented along the way. So I, I believe I speak for the admin team and supervisors and everyone who had that opportunity to attend that it, it was a moving day and a, and a great great experience and i'm forever thankful for the efforts of, of that particular group of in, for ordinary individuals one day and, and next so thank you for the opportunity what else yeah if you guys get a chance to go if you haven't been to flight 93 i recommend you go to it and it was yeah, it was pretty sobering and and I, I, I talked to Stern Heisen, I've been there before, but you walk away with a much different perspective when you have somebody who, who knows more detailed information about it and you look at it through the, you know, a leadership lens like that. It's much different. Just like 
you, they have Gettysburg leadership walks too. You know, you go to Gettysburg all the time and when you actually go with somebody, mm -hmm. you look at it through a lens of leadership and see how those lessons transfer to, you know, our roles, you know, in leadership in, in a school district or in a business or however the case might be. And now we move down to board member comments. Any board member? Actually, I'd like to make one. Um, Mrs. Sullivan at home listened to us. So um, she sent me a text saying, again, that we had two kids in the Aspire program who graduated, but she said it is going really, really well. And she, she has close contact with that program. I just wanted to share that with everybody else that she just reinforced that. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going to just tag on to what Dr. Sterner Hines said two hours ago um, about graduation, because I've been to a lot of graduations. I thought it was awesome. Right? Really? I mean, the kids were great. The parents were great. <laughs> Everything just seemed like it went like clockwork. And I like how this new kind of award you added to a little bit. Yeah, but you you did your own little twist yeah. to it. But I, I, yeah, I thought that was great. So anyway, good for you guys. It was awesome. Thank you. Any other comments? I think we should congratulate Dr. Deshong on becoming a uh, grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> That's a couple okay. days ago. Oh. <laughs> I really appreciate that, and, and I might add too. I, it's been an honor and, and a joy to uh, spend the second half of this year uh, with you and uh, Waynesboro School District. And I had an opportunity to meet with all the principals today. We had a meeting, and just uh, really the the sincerity and uh, just the, the kindness and uh, um, just just the, the the seriousness in which and it really is. And you know, as everybody's comment, and I mean. You know, for as much sometimes as, you know, sometimes folks pick up on bad things that happen, if you put that in a balance and in a scale and you really look at all the great things that are going on and happening, because there's a lot of great things that are going on and happening in our district too. So, so thank, thank you, you very much. We should also welcome back Mrs. Courtney. Right. <laughs> Especially for her husband. <laughs> Yeah, I was really expecting to have a little infant chair. <laughs> I know. Because I've lost my baby. So. Well, I just scolded my husband in a text because he gave her to my mother-in-law without her pants on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So this is kind of like the official, official end of the school year. And uh, just a shout out and a thank you to the administrators, starting with central office staff, to school administrators, teachers, uh, support staff, everyone for a wonderful year, especially coming, uh, being back to a the first normal year. And so I think uh, we bounce back pretty, pretty good as a, as a school district. So um, that's positive and looking forward to the next Looking forward to fall, but I don't want to see any back to school commercials yet. <laughs> Wait until later. Okay. Any other comments? Right. Okay. So, can we get a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And we will be going into executive session after this and not returning. <laughs>